Thank you. Um, yeah, my name is Anna Maria Veit. I'm very proud to be the recipient of this Outstanding Dissertation Award and to stand here today to talk about something that I'm very passionate about and that I worked for in the last couple of years. Um, maybe a little bit about my background. I did my bachelor's and master's in computer science at Saarland University and Max Planck Institute for Informatics. Um, then I moved to Helsinki to do a PhD with Antti Olas Wörter um, at Aalto University. And now, um, since last year, I'm at ETH Zurich um, as a postdoctoral researcher with Otmar Hillekes. And probably most of you know this device and use it probably every day in one form or, an, or another. And this is kind of the center of my research. Text input is still the major activity, how we interact with, with computing devices. Um, but we also know that the keyboard is not very ideal for entering English language, let alone any other language. Let it be on the, on the computer, and it's even worse for mobile devices or smartwatches or virtual environments. Um, text input on the, on the QWERTY layout is comparably slow to, for example, how fast we can speak or read. Um, it's quite difficult to learn and can be very unergonomic. So one of the biggest problems I try to solve um, is that the QWERTY keyboard is not very ideal for inputting text. And where it comes from um, actually goes back almost 150 years ago when really the very first typewriter came on the market produced by Remington. Um, we cannot be sure how the letters actually came together on the QWERTY keyboard. Fact is that um, it somehow emerged from an alphabetical arrangement of the letters. We still see that on the, on the middle row, which is very much alphabetically sorted. Um, there are some, some theories if it's supposed to support um, um, Morse code, telegraphers, um, or that it, the letters are arranged in a way to, for, the, for the mechanics of the typewriter to work better. We, we are not really sure about this. Um, a little bit later came the touch typing system, a system where you put your fingers in the middle row of the keyboard and use one finger for each of the columns, um, which is supposed to help you to type, uh, to type fast and to keep your, your gaze on the, on the screen and type by touch. This was um, invented by a f guy called Frank Edward McGurin in uh, 1978, who just tried to be as fast as possible on the typewriter. So you see that um, the way you enter text today very much um, was, was developed for a mechanical uh, machine 150 years ago and still we use this touch typing system is the only way we know um, how to teach people to type and we still use the same query layout for all kinds of devices, which is kind of weird, right? Um, so some people, of course, recognized early um, that this uh, QWERTY layout might, lay, layout might not be ideal for typing English and tried to change it. One of the um, most recognized um, um, effort, efforts to do that was, was led by August Trorak, 1936. Um, he, he studied um, the people's typing behavior the, the, um, and, and the, distri the statistical distributions of English and tried to manually rearrange the letters on the keyboard, for example, to equalize the load of the hands and fingers um, to make it, um, to, he recognized that um, the speed to type a certain letter very much depends on the letter that you typed before. So he tried to um, minimize the, the awkward movements that you had to do with your hands and fingers to um, maximize hand alternation where different fingers of different hands could, could type different letters and therefore to, to kind of develop a better keyboard for people. And he did many studies to prove the superiority of this um, and it's still available on most operating systems today but not that many people use it. The problem that Trorak tried to solve formally, um, the design problem, is the so what we call today the letter assignment problem. Question of what is the best assignments of letters to the keys of the keyboard that allows you to type fastest. And this has already been recognized in the 1970s by operations researchers as an instant of the general assignment problem, which is a common problem um, to model many real world problems like the scheduling of, of shift of workers or of, of, of factory plans um, on a certain, in a certain country, things like that. It's a very complex problem. For example, um, just for the 26 six letters of the al alphabet, we already have 10 to the power of 26 different possible arrangements, possible keyboard layouts, which are, all have different properties in terms of how fast they are, how easy they are to learn, how ergonomic they are. 
So it's really impossible to try more traditional design methods, try to um, construct all these different um, keyboard layouts, test them with users. So the approach that we took um, to assess, uh, to try to deal with this problem is to use optimization methods. Um, algorithms that um, try to find the minimum or maximum of a function. So very basic math. Um, but the challenge here is um, that we need to develop a model of what we want to design for. So we need to quantify, for example, the performance, what um, Trorak did in his work. Um, and then we can, use, if we do that, if we for formulate it as a mathematical function, we can use very um, fast methods that are out there that are freely available and that have many researchers have spent a lot of time to develop very fast um, methods to, to find the minimum or maximum of these functions. And these give us then quantitative guarantees on the goodness, on the optimality of, of the design that we, that we get. And let's, allows us to, to very efficiently and very quickly search through many, many different alternative designs, automatically evalu evaluate them with the functions that we have developed and, and pick a good solution. And let me quickly show you how this letter assignment problem can be formulated mathematically. Um, so imagine that you have n different letters and different keys. Um, now we use so-called decision variables, x, to denote if a certain letter is mapped to a certain key or not. So x is one if this letter is assigned to the key. Now imagine that we have two letters assigned um, with these two xik and xjl. Now we want to know what is the cost of entering the letter J after the letter I. And this is represented by the C term here. If we now sum up over all possible combinations of letter pairs mapped to different key pairs, um, then we get our objective function, the function that we want to minimize. We want to minimize this cost of entering one letter after another. This is basically all that there is. Um, we just need to add some constraints um, that make sure that our optimization process um, assigns all the letters that there are and doesn't assign um, letters uh, to a, two letters to the same key, for example. So, as I said, if once we have um, developed this um, mathematical formulation, this is an integer program, uh, we can build on, on methods from operations research to just throw that in and get out a very good solution. And some people have done that, um, and they got different different keyboard layouts, which are about seven to eight percent faster than what we can do with the QWERTY keyboard. The problem with these methods um, is that, of course, or the question there is, is how do you quantify this cost term? What is the cost of entering text? And the, how researchers have done this so far was to um, rely on studies from over 30 years ago, 50, 30 years ago, um, where people have studied a lot about how people type on typewriters. As shown here on the left, it's very different from how we type on our modern computer keyboards today. So one of my research goals was to advance our understanding of modern typing behavior so that we could build keyboards that are actually optimized for what we do today with our keyboards and not what we have done 30 years ago on typewriters. Um, I did two uh, big studies to understand modern typing behavior a bit better. Both are published and the, the data sets are published and freely available. One was that we went, first went to the motion capture lab where we put little markers, uh, reflective markers on the fingers of people typing um, and therefore could record at every keystroke what they did with their fingers, which key pressed which keystroke. And for the first time we could actually um, see what kind of um, strategies people use, if people still use this touch typing system, or what strategy they developed for their own if they have never taught, were never taught this touch typing system. And um, then we did a little bit larger scale study with 160,000 participants um, doing an online typing test where we could collect a lot, a lot of typing data and for the first time really um, see at large scale um, how people type based on the keystrokes that they do in this online typing test. The main findings that came out of this is that there is actually a very large variety of typing styles that adapt over time. 
And um, the number of fingers that people use um, in contrast to what many people think is that it's not necessarily an indicator for typing speed. So you don't need to have taken this touch typing course to be similarly fast as, pe as people that have done that. Um, we found other factors um, in contrast that make you a faster typist, which for example, the visual attention that you can keep it on the screen, um, so-called rollover typing where you prepare upcoming key presses and already press the next key before the previous one is released, um, minimizing your global hand movement and just moving your fingers individually. And um, these findings have many practical impl implications, of course, how we can teach typing. Um, but most importantly for this work, they directly inform the optimization of the keyboard. While Trorak and others after him optimized for the touch typing system, um, a keyboard optimized for that might actually not be ideal for modern typists that type very differently, as we've seen here. And this gets even more obvious, of course, as we, as we look at other text input methods that use the QWERTY keyboard. And it's really all around us. You can, you can look at, at virtual environments, um, ticket terminals. They're, they all use the QWERTY keyboard, maybe sometimes an alphabetical keyboard. Um, but they, they may use very different forms of entering text not just using less fingers, but for example, using a rotary control, pointing in the air with a, with a remote controller. So they are optimizing for the 10 finger touch typing system isn't, doesn't really make sense, of course. Um, but what is more, these are different scenarios in which you enter text and it might actually be that performance is not the major goal that you, you might want to optimize for. But there are other things like user experience, ergonomics, um, ease of use, accessibility or learnability um, that may, may be important in different scenarios. And these are all ba very basic criteria to take into account when you design any user interface really, but they are often ignored when it comes to, to text input methods and performance often seems to be the only goal if you look at, at related work in text input. So what other people have, have done so far is mostly concerned with the physical keyboard, as I said, touch typing. Um, People, like throughout the 2000s, people have started to look at soft keyboards, which are operated with one or two fingers. Um, and the main objective has, has been performance, really. Then people have started to realize, okay, maybe if we keep the, the keyboard similar to the QWERTY, then people are more likely to pick it up and use it. So there has been this, this um, objective function of QWERTY similarity. Um, and then input recognition, how easy it is, for example, to use for, for, for auto correction system to, to recognize what you want to type. Um, but I, th I thought that um, we really need to expand the space of optimizable text input, input methods and this was one of the goals of my thesis. Because there are many more ways that you can enter text using the hands um, besides just pressing buttons and selecting a character from, from this grid of, of, of buttons. Um, the, the hands dexterity is really amazing and because there are many ways that we can think about entering text. Um, for example, pressing multiple buttons or um, doing this kind of drawing gestures or coding or hand gestures where we really, really, really utilize this hands dexterity. Um, in all of these cases, the question is what is the best assignment of symbols to these input actions? And um, I have shown that uh, you can use this very same integer program that I have shown you before, um, but the question is what is this cost term that you want to optimize for? And in my thesis I present um, a big set of these objective functions of these cost terms, um, partly taken from prior work um, of what people have optimized for, but adding on top a lot of new um, models that quantify not only the performance, but only also the learnability, the ergonomics, and this input recognition um, of, of all kinds of different ways to enter text. And um, so there in the, in the thesis, you can pick it up and uh, take the formula and then run your optimization on it. And um, I want to quickly show you three cases where I have applied this. Um, the first is um, the question of how can we transfer the skill from one domain to another? And here we looked at how, how um, 
how great uh, pianists can operate their piano and wondered if we could translate this to text input. So what we did is that we actually m optimized a mapping, uh, th this assignment of letters to the piano keys in a way that people, could, people that know how to play piano can use the same motor movements to enter text with that. And we trained a hobby pianist there in a long-term study over 140 hours um, to, to, use the, to memorize this assignment and, and enter text with the piano. And she got over 80 words per minute, which I think is no other text input method out there um, in research that gets that high. And that's, that compares to a professional typist on the, on the QWERTY keyboard. And she was still improving. Um, and that within 140 hours. Like, um, to, to get to that in, in QWERTY, you need three, four hundred hours of training. So that's, that's incredible. <laughs> um, another thing is that we looked at mid-air gestures. And we're wondering, um, these kind of gestures that you see here, what is a good way to enter text with them? Again, the question, what, what letter should we enter with what gesture? And there's really no, no intuitive, no natural mapping from, from hand gestures to letters, right? Um, so we developed uh, models of, of performance and ergonomics that quantified for each of these finger combinations that you can do, how, how fast and comfortable it is to do that, and use that then to find the optimal assignment of the letters to the keyboard, which very much um, resembles um, the finger spelling uh, that you have in sign, sign language. And it was actually predicted that um, the mapping that we found was, was faster than, than the finger spelling, for example, that you have, have in sign language. Lastly, I want to I wanna point out my, my, my crown project, which I'm very proud of. Um, we just um, last, last month, or yeah, last month, we released the standard of the new French keyboard, where we got to apply um, our optimization methods um, together with a committee of experts um, to rearrange the keys on the French keyboard. Uh, the problem that they had was um, that some characters that you need to type French are not actually not available on the French keyboard. These are special characters um, with accents um, or ligatures and these kind of things, which is, is very harmful to the French language, which kind of deteriorates because people do not properly spell it because they just can't. So the French government wanted to have a new keyboard um, that has many more characters on them and that allows people to easily type correct French. And we posed that as this optimization problem um, where you have to assign uh, many different, these over 100 different characters to the key slots of the keyboard, whereas the, the regular letters stay where they are so that people wouldn't be too confused and would want to, to um, take this, this keyboard. And um, the, the keyboard layout that came out was really a collaboration um, between the experts of the committee and our algorithm. So we went there and we formulated the, the, prop, the optimization process based on their input, and then we could um, optimize different keyboard layouts and present to them. They could use our tool to explore what happens if I change the character set, what happens if I, if I remove these characters, what happens if I weigh the different um, objectives differently. And this is something that, we re that, that I realized um, th at the end of this, of this very long project is that optimization methods are very powerful tools for designing user interfaces, but even more so if they allow the collaboration with people and the input. So have a look at my, my thesis if you want to know more about um, optimization of text input methods. Um, pick up these objective functions that I present you ready to use, how people type on more modern keyboards and uh, the projects I have shown you, and I really thank my my great supervisor, Antti, uh, and I had Shumin Chai in my, as, my, as my opponent in my defense, which was a great pleasure to discuss my work with him and all the collaborators and, and people I worked with. So thank you so lot. Thank you.